This video was sponsored by Spec Products. Hey guys, it's Carl. So this is not revisited, it's just uh, being my review of using the iPhone 15 Pro Max as my daily for the past couple of weeks now, close to a month. And initially when this phone came out, there were reports, a lot of stuff floating around online that uh, this phone was broken temperature wise. Um, Apple claimed that it was the third party app's fault uh, for keeping that temperature up. And now there is a new iOS update 17.0.3, which I've upgraded to. In my opinion, uh, since I've been using it, I actually haven't had a problem with any of the temperature. So in the first couple of weeks, I was actually on a trip uh, in Greece using this primarily with the stock Apple apps, mostly just taking a lot of footage. I was there for a buddy's wedding, so I didn't really notice any overheating. And for the rest of the use, my experience has been, you know, pretty Apple-esque. It's been great for a new flagship. So the pros come in the two different sizes here. So we have the 15 Pro Max, which this review will kind of focus on, obviously the 15 Pro. So 6.1 versus a 6.7 inches. The big reason for going to the Pro models is for that extra battery life for me. Obviously having a larger screen is nice. And something new to the Pro models or the Pro Max models, the telephoto is five times optical. So that's 120 mil uh, focal length equivalent. And that's just because of the larger, I guess, size of the actual device. So those are the two options. And the last difference being the 15 Pro Max is 256 base storage, whereas the 15 Pro is 128. So those are the big differences between them. Obviously the color is uh, super subjective, but I do think the natural titanium is the winner here. The titanium is around the outsides. That's obviously the banding. They've switched from stainless steel. It's slightly lighter. You won't notice the difference. It still collects fingerprints. This one is a bit more matte, but uh, the gray backing is what I like. Most people rock uh, skins or cases on them. So I was using the fine woven or the fine woven case from Apple. It replaces their leather one. It's a straight up pass. I think it's one of the worst accessories that Apple has made. It just picks up too much lint, too much debris. It scratches, it's got weird rubber sidings. I think Apple should either improve it or bring out a vegan leather, some sort of other option. So the case I've been rocking is actually uh, this one from Spec. It's the Presidio 2, so it comes in two different options. You can either get it with the smooth back or the grip case. If you're someone that's uh, notorious for dropping your phone, it's just easier to kind of hold on to. It's got some pretty great protection on the inside and especially on the corners, which is the typical drop point. And it has another cool system called Click Lock. So obviously all iPhones uh, have MagSafe. It's that little magnet on the back so you can snap on accessories. But I find even if you're using say, any sort of MagSafe accessory, it's not fully locked into place. This little shallow groove with click lock ensures that say you have another spec accessory like their wallet. It has the little click lock system on the back as well. So typically with MagSafe, it'll just click into place. It still can move around, but with click lock that actually lines up. There's a small little click and now that wallet is super secure that isn't going anywhere. And that's super handy. Obviously you don't want your wallet with your credit cards, with your ID to go flying anywhere. They've got a mounting system for within my car, which I've been using. Same kind of thing. There's that slight little click. And now this is super secure. And the only way that this is coming off is an intentional pull to deactivate the magnet, not by accidentally kind of like hitting it to the side, which obviously happens quite a bit. So that's super dope. And they're also doing their part. The cases are made of 50% recycled plastics and it also has built-in antimicrobial treatment from microband. So that gives 99% reduction in stain and odor causing bacteria on the case. So when you compare this to say the fine woven case uh, from Apple that scratches, that collects stuff on it, uh, that doesn't just hold up over time. Um, I've been super happy with these and would definitely recommend them to accessories or people looking for accessories for their new Pro, Pro Max. Flipping around to the front of the display. So 6.7 inches, the bezels are slightly thinner, which I'm a huge fan of. It still has ProMotion LTPO, 120 Hertz refresh rate. So it feels nice, quick and snappy, slightly brighter at 2000 nits and compared to the Pixel 8 Pro, which now has the brightest smartphone display, which is 2400 nits. Um, you're really comparing a nit brightness if that's your thing, but it's super bright. If you're in direct sunlight, it's still easy to use. It still has Dynamic Island, which is now a year old. I still prefer the small hole punch cutout of uh, Android phones, but that's obviously personal preference. And I would say a lot of the aesthetic upgrades are honestly tied to iOS 17. So a lot has changed visually. So a lot of the animations are a bit different. 
you've got updated and interactive widgets, you have new updated uh, contact wallpapers, and you have cool things like name drop where you bring two devices uh, side by side and you can share contact info. Once again, that isn't tied to the new 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, that's more of an iOS update, but uh, this is the first device to ship with that in body, but if you have an older device, you obviously um, have access to that. And for the rest of the performance, so it's rocking the new A17 Pro chip, it's the first uh, three nanometer chip, so they've moved away from the A16 Bionic name, it now has a Pro chip inside. So obviously I've said this for every video in the last couple of years, it's a flagship device, everything that you throw at it will perform flawlessly, but now, with this new chip, playing AAA title games, like you could play console worthy level games on a smartphone. So this thing is literally like a computer in your pocket. It's probably the most powerful chip on a smartphone. Will most people realize that? For your standard texting, for scrolling through social media, for your endless hours of loop on TikTok, Maybe not, but um, you have that option if you are someone that loves to play mobile gaming. I was coming from my 14 Pro and I sadly don't get enough game time or mobile game time. I somehow have been crushing Candy Crush lately. Like, it, how is that a thing? I've been sucked back into somehow a game that I used to play, what, back in 2008? Um, that's the game I played when I was sitting at an airport in Greece, when I was trying to burn some hours on an airplane. Was that an injustice uh, that I have the most powerful smartphone, but maybe I'm playing one of the first games that ever came out for an iPhone? It is what it is. It's super subjective what you use your phone for. The last of the physical changes, so obviously upgrading to uh, USB-C. It's not really upgrading, it's they finally made the jump. So it does help with obviously charging times. It's now just one cable across all of my tech. Finally, for the 15 Pro models, it's a faster USB-C port. So you can actually connect this to extra peripherals like a little hard drive, like an external monitor. I can hook up my 15 Pro Max to my Pro Display XDR and be super baller if that's what you wanna do. Obviously you now have that option, which is super dope. And the last one is the new action button. So I'm a big fan of this actually. So they've switched from the little toggle, which was the silent switch. You can now map this to a bunch of different preset uh, shortcuts or even shortcuts itself. So you can actually have this when you enter your house to start up your smart home automation, to turn on lights, to raise the blinds, to start your smart floor heating, whatever you may have. That's all set to a shortcut. I obviously just have mine to launch the camera since it's the app that I use the most. And now that brings me to, I guess, photo and video performance, which I think is the most important thing. So 48 megapixel main, slightly tweaked. It's the same sensor, but slightly better than before than the 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max. And with those new sensors, you technically now have access to seven different focal ranges. So you have the macro option, then you have ultra wide. Within the one times, if you actually click that, you get 28 mils, 35 as well as the standard at 24. So those three options, you've got the two times and now of course five times optical zoom. So seven different focal ranges across the board, but the biggest use that I found, uh, I do take a lot of iPhone video, is the five times on video. It looks a lot crispier uh, than before. One of the big criticisms uh, of iPhones compared to say the S23 Ultra, which has 10 times optical zoom, is you just couldn't zoom far enough. It's gotten better still not as good as uh, the Samsung or most Android phones, but uh, it's definitely getting in the better direction. Obviously you have uh, Apple ProRes, which you can record uh, in log. So if you're a fan of that cinematic look, you can uh, grade your footage. I still typically shoot most of my stuff uh, on Sony's, but I have the option to shoot in log if that's uh, your jam. I took so many photos and of course video in Greece. So I'll let you guys be the judge of the photo and video performance. It's still very comparable to the 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max. There hasn't been that big of an upgrade. I think the uh, bigger upgrade actually comes to the standard iPhone 15 line. That now has the main 48 megapixel sensor from before, which it was only the smaller 12, which was uh, on iPhones like for the past like six, seven years. So that is the bigger upgrade for the standard 15 line. So in the end, is the 15 Pro Max worth it? Most people will rock a case on it so you won't get to feel the nice titanium. I think the battery life on the Pro models is better than the smaller 15 Pro, but you also have the 15 Plus, which is kind of the one that I would still recommend to most people. That third extra camera, unless you really need that extra zoom capability, unless you really want to record in Apple ProRes with that log footage, 
the standard 15, 15 plus, that's always been uh, my recommendation. You'll save a ton of money. The fact that I'm not playing a AAA title and still playing Candy Crush, which I think an iPhone like seven can still handle perfectly fine, kind of shows the performance level, which I'm at. Obviously the multitasking, switching between all the stuff that I do, the 15 will still be able to handle. Um, but let me know your thoughts on the 15 Pro Max. Happy that Apple came out with an update pretty quickly. I know a lot of people were complaining about the temperature. Once again, my unit didn't have any of those issues, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed my pretty comprehensive review. I'm happy that I got to go on a trip with it, use it to its full paces, and I will uh, catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes. Peace.